I'm here at the WISIS 2012 Forum with someone who should need no introduction, Miss Gina Davis, Academy Award winning actor, star of films such as Thelma and Louise, The Long Kiss Goodnight, A League of Their Own, An Accidental Tourist, and recently founder of the Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media. Gina, thank you very much for being with us. Gina, you're very proactive in campaigning for different stereotypes for girls and women in media. How would you characterise the situation today and what would you like to see change in an ideal world? Well, I've made quite a study of uh, gender depictions in media. Um, my institute has actually done the largest amount of research ever uh, sponsored in, in this area, covering a 20-year span. So the ratio of male to female characters has been the same since 1946. So we're not gradually uh, getting to equity. Um, there are far fewer female characters than male characters. Uh, and the female characters that are depicted are very, very narrowly stereotyped and very often hypersexualized, even in you know, movies and shows that are made for, for very little kids. So my theory is that we're training generation after generation to see women as not taking up half the space in the world and not being as important as men and boys because they're not seeing them actively involved in life and, and uh, taking the space that's rightfully theirs. So uh, now that we have this data, uh, it's a very valuable tool because we're able to go directly to the creators of kids media, uh, you know, because I'm in the industry, whatever, and uh, work as colleagues to uh, encourage them to add more female characters and, uh, you know, stretch the ideas of, of what they can be. And they've been very responsive, I have to say. I think we really are going to uh, see a change within the next several years. How do you think we develop authentic and compelling role models that inspire girls? And isn't there a risk that characters develop deliberately to offer a better gender image won't be popular because they're perceived as artificial? Well, this is, that's a very good question um, because I don't ever use the word role models when I'm talking about characters. Uh, I've played characters myself that women have found compelling but who are not role models necessarily. I think the thing to do is create genuine characters who are different and unique and have flaws and, you know, like, like male characters are, you know, the, and, and I think partly because most writers are male and most directors and most producers, um, there's a fear of creating female characters. That's a little bit what you're talking about. Well, we, can't, we have to be careful. We can't make her too this or too that. Um, and, uh, I would like them to just throw away that idea. You, uh, let's say write, write the characters all as male and then just change the names because there's no special gimmick to creating uh, female characters. If there's characters who are doing active things and are in charge of their own fate, that's a role model. And why do you think there's such resistance to strong roles for women in Hollywood? I think it all stems from this belief in Hollywood that's that's seen as gospel, that women will watch men, but men won't watch women. Uh, and everything in Hollywood is run based on this, including children. Girls will watch boys, but boys won't watch girls. Uh, this theory is not in any way been proven, uh, but still it very much impacts all the decisions that are made. So every time there's a movie starring women that's a big success, Thelma and Louise was one, uh, the media all says, oh, now everything's changed. Now we're going to see so many movies starring women and nothing changes. And it happens, you know, year after year, there'll be one maybe every year or every two years uh, that's a huge success and it's starring women and about women. But the decision makers in Hollywood still say, yeah, but nah, I don't trust it. I think it's maybe just a one off. So we never get any momentum going. Uh, which is why we're sort of stuck in the same pattern. You've recently accepted to become ITU's Special Envoy on Women and Girls in ICT. How do you feel about that and what do you think it'll involve? I'm, I'm thrilled with this, uh, this new position and I'm, I'm uh, so appreciative of, of this opportunity and I'm such a fan of ITU and uh, what they do. I mean, it's an incredible organization that wields a lot of clout globally. So. 
um, it's, it's very significant to me to be able to take some of the work I do in a, in a much bigger scale globally. Um, I think it's incredibly important to get uh, more women and girls into IT. And, uh, and a, a big factor in, in helping this happen is going to be ITU's work. Gina Davis, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.